Hello, I'm Dr. Charles Von Gunten, and I'm here to talk to you about hospice care. I'm a medical oncologist by background, but I've spent most of my last 15 years of my career working in hospices, helping people live as well as possible until the end of their lives. What I want to talk to you about today is hospice care, what it is, what you can expect, and most importantly, what you can help advocate for people you love so that they can get the care they need to be as comfortable and as high a quality of life as possible. I want to divide this talk into four pieces. I want to give you enough background about why hospice care was developed. I want to explain what hospice care can do for a patient and his or her family. I want to describe what a patient and family get when they enroll in hospice care. And I want to describe the benefits and why you would want to know about this kind of care that's available for you and people you love. So I want to start with a mental experiment. Think for a moment, what gives you the most meaning and value and quality of your life? Most people say the work they do, the children they are bringing up, their spouse, their family, and how they spend their leisure time. Now I want you to imagine that you haven't been feeling well. You're diagnosed with a serious illness and your doctor says you have a limited life expectancy. What changes now? What adds most to your quality of life now? Most people say that their work is not as important when they know they have a serious illness, that relationships are the most important to them, that they need to finish business, and they want to spend that time with as much purpose and as much life as possible. What are you most afraid of in this mental image I've asked you to conjure? Most people say they're afraid of being a burden, a burden on people they love who would need to help take care of them. They also say they're afraid of being in pain or having other physical symptoms. Many say they fear most a loss of personal dignity and a loss of control. If you were in this situation, what would you want to achieve? Most people say they want to complete things. There may be s important events or important things they've saved up to say. It's a funny thing about human beings that although we have many close relationships, we often wait until a significant event or when we know we have a limited life expectancy before we say the things that we want to say. Ira Bayok, who is a national author, has said there are four important things when you are getting close to the end of your life. You need to be able to say, I love you, I forgive you, please forgive me, and goodbye. Think about what it takes to do that. If you are in this state, where would you like to be? Most people would say, I want to be in my own home with the people I love for as long as possible. I would rather not spend my life in doctor's offices or hospitals 
or in other medical care. So, as a background to this talk, hospice care was developed to meet the needs that you just developed in your own mind about what you would need for yourself or more likely what someone you love will need if they're in this kind of situation. So a question that might occur to you is, why now, why at this time in history has hospice care been developed? I want you to think back to perhaps 200 years ago or 100 years ago. Most people died very quickly. It was sudden, it was usually from an infection, or from an accident. And so the period between being perfectly well and having died was often just a day or two. With progress over the last hundred years, with modern medical care, we have learned to prolong life. We now avoid the commonest causes of death a hundred years ago. We have antibiotics for infections. We now have um, ways to prevent accidents. So fortunately, we all live much longer, but most of us will die of a disease of which we know the name. It might be cancer. It might be heart disease. It might be emphysema, lung disease. And one of the things that we have learned in modern medical care is that sometimes the disease can be cured. But for most these things from which people die, we can control the illness for a time. But ultimately, we all will die. And for many, that is a prolonged experience. So although most of us can expect to live now into our 80s, most of us will have a period of years of serious illness before we die. Each of us, it's certainly true for me, want to live as fully as possible with as good a quality of life as possible until the very last day. Let me illustrate this with a case. Kit was both a friend of mine and a patient. She was about my age, early 50s. She went for a routine physical exam. She was changing jobs. And the x-ray showed a mass. It turned out to be cancer. Of course, it was operated on. And Kit hoped that that operation cured her. She had serious pain after the operation. It was a success. She needed modern medical care as a way to control that pain. A year later, the cancer came back. Modern medical therapy was able to help control it. It shrank it. But about a year later, the cancer came back again. She had more treatment. But at a point after another year, the treatment no longer was helping the cancer. Think for a moment what was important to Kit. It was probably the same things that would be important to you. She was worried about her family. She was married. Most of you women who are married to men know they are deeply dependent on their wives. She worried what would happen to him after she was gone. She had children. She wanted to be sure they were well cared for and they would survive well after she died. For Kit, the next year and a half was a period of ups and downs. Therapy would help for a time, and then it wouldn't. It would then help, it wouldn't. Throughout 